stammering or stuttering is actually really hard to define, even though everyone knows it when they hear it. In terms of what causes stammering, it's not caused by nerves. It's a physical struggle to get the words out, um, normally caused by a neurological condition where the part of the brain that processes speech behaves differently. And someone who stammers, they might repeat or prolong or get stuck on sounds or words. There might also be visible signs of tension as they try and um, get those words out. Some people who stammer, they talk, uh, their, they talk their way around difficult words. So in fact, you may not realize they stammer uh, 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 at all. It's important to say that no two people stammer in the same way. And not only does stammering vary from person to person, but it's actually also highly variable for the person who stammers. So they may be fluent one moment and then struggling to speak the next. Stammering usually starts in childhood, and in terms of my own personal experience, that was the case for me. I started stammering when I was about uh, eight or nine years old. I didn't know anyone else who stammered, and I really struggled at school, um, university, and also in the workplace. Most people think of stammering as solely the speech differences, but actually it's the hidden aspects of the stammer, such as the thoughts, um, the feelings, um, about the stammering, which in my experience is, is more important. More happens internally than people actually realise, such as the fear and the anticipation about stammering and all these other strong emotional feelings about stammering, such as sadness, embarrassment, um, shame, guilt, and the negative responses of others or the perception of the negative responses of others can also contribute to those feelings, all things which I've experienced growing up. Avoidance of words is common for someone with a stammer and the fear of being judged by others can lead to hiding the stammer. Uh, avoidance can include, um, for example, example, inserting filler words like um or er uh before a difficult word, swapping a difficult word for an easier one, for example, going out for a meal, but ordering something you don't really want, but the word is easier to say than the one you do want. Um, saying less or nothing in challenging speaking situations, um, for example, at meetings or even socially. Turning down opportunities to present or even attending events or missing the start of things when in, uh, introductions are really, really required. All these things I've done and experienced. When I was at university, I wouldn't give presentations. I hated using the phone. I sometimes still do. When I graduated, with my first jobs, I avoided doing any sort of public speaking. But gradually I learned that facing my fears is more important. G -g given the strong emotions that stammering can have, there are some things that you can do in the workplace to make things comfortable when speaking with a person who stammers. In fact, many of these are good practice generally for creating an inclusive environment at work. It can be disconcerting talking with someone who stammers, but just listen and be patient, maintain natural eye contact and wait until the person is finished speaking. Please don't give advice such as tell the person to slow down or take a breath or relax. It's not helpful. People who stammer usually find saying their name particularly hard. They might block before saying that. So please don't ever joke, have you forgotten your name? If there is a situation that involves meeting new people, Ask the person who stammers privately beforehand if they would like to introduce themselves or if they'd like you to introduce them. If you're in a group of people chatting, make sure you can see the person who stammers. If you can see that they want to speak, interrupt the flow and invite them to join the conversation. It's important to set an example to others. When someone stammers, you might assume that they're unsure of what they're saying. They aren't. They're just checking their speech and they're worried about how to say something. They may also talk very fast. Don't interrupt or speak over them and don't try to guess or finish their words. If you miss something, just ask them to repeat it. It's important to let the speaker know that you are listening. Focus on what they're saying, not how they say it. People who stammer can have the most difficulty when starting to speak and less difficulty once underway. People who stammer can often find controlling their speech on the phone particularly hard. So if you do pick up the phone and hear nothing, please give them plenty of time to speak. And most importantly, 
don't be afraid to ask them how you can make things easier for them. It can be really tough coping with a stammer. However, there is help and support available. The best place to find information, advice and guidance about stammering is the British Stammering Association. Their mission is to support anyone who stammers in the UK, as well as to tackle the stigma, ignorance and discrimination that people who stammer often face. There is no diversity without disfluency. It's just how we talk.